In regards to black women not being protected, let me first state the obvious. No man should put his hands on a woman. Except in cases of self-defense. You would think that goes without saying, but in this clown world that we live in, if a woman is trying to harm you, do great bodily harm to you, trying to kill you, defend yourself. And ladies, keep your hands to yourself. We desire protection, but sometimes what we don't understand is that true protection comes with a level of control. Absolutely. As a man, if I can't have a level of control, how can I possibly protect you? It's impossible. I'll tell you a story. I was dating this girl one time, and we'd actually been together for uh, at least a year, maybe a little bit longer. I'm looking out for danger to protect her. She's not looking out that. If she is, it's not to the level that I am. And if you couple that with the fact that I'm a pretty big guy, I tower over most people at 6'5", six 6'6", five, six six with shoes. I can see things. I'm looking for things. I saw a bus. We, we were walking. Uh, we came up to the uh, to the crosswalk. And I, whether I'm by myself or with somebody, I don't like to walk up to the edge, uh, to the curb, because it removes the margin of error that you have if some idiot makes a mistake. Or if they're not an idiot, maybe they had a medical emergency, and there's something happening with a car that's coming towards a curb at you. I don't stand right on the curb. So I stood back a little bit and I could see that a bus was coming, but she could not see that because she and I were talking and she was paying attention to me and I was paying attention to her, but I pay attention not with direct eye contact all the time. I'm looking around while listening to her. She's looking at me. I saw the bus coming. So we got up. She likes to, she liked to walk up to the edge, but I, which I didn't know until that time. And so I grabbed her arm and pulled her back and she essentially pulled away from me and said, oh, I'm fine. I like to stand right here. And at that moment, as soon as that happened, I was like, I said to myself, this is this relationship's not going anywhere. Point is, if I don't have a level, a little bit of control, it's impossible for me to protect you. I should say that it becomes incredibly more difficult and it puts me at a higher risk because you're careless. Bodyguards are a good example. A bodyguard will make their client leave from a dangerous place. The bodyguard has to know all the details, who, what, when, where, why, and how. And the Precisely. Yeah, if I was a bodyguard and I was getting paid, I was a professional bodyguard getting paid, I don't care who it is. If I have someone who has hired me, which means they're in the power position, and they want me to, pr to put my life on the line to protect them, but they won't listen to me, they're going to get a couple of chances uh, at correction before I say to myself, this is not worth the money. I'm not going to... I say that I'm willing to die for you, but that's only because uh, you're going to be paying me handsomely. And on top of that, the fact that you don't listen means that you're increasing my chances that I'm going to have to die for you. So I'm just going to leave. It's not worth it. You have to listen and you have to relinquish some control. The client has to listen to the bodyguard and follow the instruction that the bodyguard gives them. It's really an agreement between all parties involved. When the person who needs protecting does not follow the instruction and the key word right there that she said is it's an agreement. Now, when we're talking employer hiring a bodyguard, there's an agreement. Bodyguard, I will pay you 250 grand a year to do this for me. You're going to be around me uh, virtually 24 seven. If someone comes at me with a knife, you take over. When someone shoots, shoots at me, you take over. You go into venues and areas and you make sure that it's safe before I go in. And I'm like, okay, I agree to that. When it comes to men and women, there's an impl implied agreement. The problem that modern women have, especially black women, they think that the implied agreement means that any man who is around is supposed to protect her, even if she's acting like an idiot, is violent, loud, obnoxious, is inviting the violence towards her, somebody's supposed to step in. And that's where women have gotten it wrong. No, we don't step in for that. I protect loved ones, and it's not everyone who's in family. It's only certain people. I will jump to protect my mother and my sister before other family members. And I fully expect that those family members would do the same for their immediate family. I'm not expecting anything from them. The modern woman, entitled as she is, thinks that, oh, I can act out and someone's gonna step in for me. That's not the case anymore. Maybe it was like that in the past because women behaved like ladies. And so when a man was getting out of control, men jumped in and said, no, you need to stop that. This woman has done nothing to you. Today, a lot of the times a woman has done something to that man 
to provoke him to get him to respond. And yes, I get it. He should just walk away. That's the case with virtually all fights um, that, that result in physical violence. The frequency is increasing where these out of control women are encountering men who are going to say, nah, you're going to step to me like a man. I'm going to knock you down like a man. Now, as a man, even at my size, I know not to initiate a fight. I know what the, the words to use and not only that, the words, the tone, your facial expressions. If I'm talking to a dude, I'm just talking to him like this. Hey man, how's it going? That's different from hey man, how's it going? You see this, this right here, that can mean I want to fight versus this. Hey man, how's it going? That's the difference right there. As men, we know this. Erica Lachey, I mean, she's, she's a very intelligent woman. She gets so much hate from other women, especially black women for simply stating what should be a universal truth that you can't act out and expect nothing to happen to you. And if you've been living under a rock, the recent event, which is, I don't know if it's real or not, it could be a skit, it could be something that was planned because this woman is chasing clout, but the brick lady, the one who got hit in the face with the brick and then jumped online to say that all these black men, they didn't jump in. Like, yeah, I mean, he hit you with, with a brick. What's he gonna do to me? I don't know you. Now, I also believe that there's nothing good that happens after 9 p.m. So I'm at home most of the time, 99% of the time, I'm not out. If you're out at midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., whatever happens is on you. You better know how to fight. You better be carrying, whether it's a, a gun, pepper spray, a knife, something, or you better be the fastest person on foot out of all the people that are out there. If you're not, if you don't have any of those things, stay home. Direction of the protector, it puts the protector in a situation where they're more likely to lose their life. I have four brothers and a father and I listen to their instruction even when they're not around. They have told me to stay away from certain places if I'm by myself or if it's late at night. They've also advised me not to be drunk or high in certain situations. I don't know her personally, but it sounds like she grew up in a good family and she's right. So for my family members, I'm going to jump to help in virtually every case. Now there is a limit to that. Fortunately, my siblings are not, uh, they're not idiots. In most things, when they make a mistake one time, it only happens one time. But if I had a situation, specifically referring to my female siblings, if I had a situation where they're constantly getting in situations with men or with women or in, in situations where I have to jump in to help or to rescue, that they easily could have avoided had they just been rational and just walked away or never gotten that situation to begin with, there's a limit. And on that, let's say the fifth call, I'm, I'm going to go, but that conversation is going to end with, this is the last time that I'm going to help you. Don't call me again. And I have no problem doing that. The immediate male members in her family helping her by protecting her, she's protecting those men by not being an idiot. Even though my brothers, my dad, and the men in my life protect me, I in turn protect them by listening to them and following their instruction. They don't have to come to my defense in some wild scenario because if I listened to them, I wouldn't have been there in the first place. And this is another thing I feel like is pertinent to say, and I know folks ain't gonna like this one. I don't have sons right now, but when I do have sons, I'm gonna teach them that there's a difference between diamonds and dirt and rubies and rocks. Rubies and diamonds are often in jewelry stores. They're in glass cases, they're secured, there's an alarm system. There's a lot of layers of protection because those things are valuable. But you could pull over to the side of the road and find some dirt and rocks. Expecting a man to risk his well-being, his future, and his life on someone who does not see value in themselves or the man is asinine. That's a very asinine thing to ask. All I'm saying is protection comes with a little bit of sacrifice. It comes with a little bit of control. And me personally, I feel that what I have to sacrifice and the amount of control I have to give up is 100% worth it to receive the protection that I've been getting my whole life. I believe her and you can see the way she behaves in this video. Now, again, I don't know her personally, but if she were a wild one, it would have come out at some point because she's put herself out there. So the haters, the people who don't like that she's speaking the truth, they will come out and they will be looking for videos, looking for proof to knock Erica Lachey down somehow. It shows that the way she was raised means that she's not getting in, hit in the face with a brick. When compared to wild women, they're getting shown how violent a man can be. And that could mean just grabbing you, grabbing her by the shirt and, and picking her up. A lot of men can do that to a lot of women. Now, granted, our women are getting a lot heavier these days, but 
it can still be done. Then is that true protection comes with a level of control. Bodyguards are a good example. Before we even play this clip, look at Erica Lachey and then look at that woman right there. If strangers, men, are going to protect all women, which woman do you think we're going to protect? The one on the screen right now or Erica Lachey? That's just by looking, just judging the book by its cover. Now let's hear what she has to say. Internalized misogyny. Stop. Most women, they don't know what misogyny means. Internalized misogyny is just another way for women who are not the ideal woman or they're the, the typical Western woman, the woman on the screen. They use that to attack other women who will curry favor from the average man, including men they don't know. Is very, very, very dangerous. She can't tell you how it's dangerous. And nothing she said in that video was valid. Normally we make a statement like that. You follow it up with, well, here's why. Here's one reason why nothing was valid. Let's see if that's the case with this woman. Nothing. And was very, very, very victim blaming. I've heard that when people use words like that multiple times, it's a sign of low intelligence. Is she gonna elaborate how it's victim blaming? She was just parroting misogynist talking point. No, she's, she's not backed up anything that she said yet. When I say pick me, women are dangerous. So we've got internalized misogyny. Just keep your, your, your NPC scorecard. So non-playable character, uh, you can, I can hear and see where and how this woman was programmed. So we've got internalized misogyny, claiming something is dangerous, and pick me. Black women typically use that as an insult. That is, that is what I mean when I say pick me women are dangerous. That whole narrative she's spewing. There's the fourth one, narrative. Internalized misogyny, dangerous, pick me, narrative. Is dangerous. And at the end of the day, she is not safe either. Because if she can be out in the- Newsflash lady, nobody is safe. The world is dangerous. Fortunately, most people don't get touched by violence. The world is dangerous. It will never be safe. Out and get attacked. That logic is not going to save her. The men around are not going to know that that's the logic she has. That's not going to save her. But what will save her is the fact that she has a brain and she uses it. Miss Lachey is not going to be in situations for the most part that would lead to her being in danger in this dangerous world. Now, like I said, there could be a situation where it's just her time, it's my time, it's your time, and you can't get away. I got my money on Miss Lachey has men around her, not even just her family. She has men around her that are willing to jump in to protect her without question. We have to dismantle patriarchy. We have to. So as she was scrambling with word to come up in, in her pea-sized brain, patriarchy. So that's five things now. Let's see if I can remember all them. Internalized misogyny, Dangerous, she said this multiple times. Pick me, four is narrative, and five is we have to destroy the patriarchy. The patriarchy is why she can make this stupid video and post it on TikTok with her smartphone over the internet and people can watch it and comment. Dismantle these things. We have to understand that parroting misogynistic talking points doesn't save us as women. You ever watch something and you're just like, I have no words? That's where I am right now. Do us any favors. I I really want to make a longer video and I might. I might I might make a video breaking down each point that she's talking about because that is a very, very dangerous video. She's not gonna break down anything. She doesn't want to make a longer video. If she had a good point to make or any good points to make or to counter anything that Miss Lachey was saying, she would have done it in that video, but she couldn't. She lacks the intelligence to do it. You can't argue against logic with emotion. I made a video about black women and preventative protection and how if you want someone to protect you, you're gonna have to listen to them and try to avoid being in dangerous situations. And because you guys didn't like what I said, I received death threats. People wish that someone would bust my car window and pistol with me. People wish that some people or that they themselves could find me and hit me with a brick. All these young girls that are out here that are still wet behind the ears but are aging like milk and bananas calling me old. I'm not expecting y'all to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that because I know y'all don't care. But I'm going to say what I want regardless because I don't receive my self-worth and validation based on what people say about me online. 
I proudly grew up in a time before all of that. And my self-worth and validation is based on my principles and my character. Some of y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. So I'll say this again for the people that have sense, preventative protection is the best kind of protection. For every other crime that exists, we understand that preventative measures is the best way to avoid said crimes. If Can anyone argue with what she just said? The people who, who are not very intelligent, they will argue with, you should teach men not to be violent. Do you think evil people listen? So if the guy, the man who hit her with a brick and does a violent act against someone else, whether it's another man or a woman, do you think if I walk up to him and say, hey man, you really, really should not stab anybody unprovoked. If it's not in self-defense, you shouldn't stab anybody. Do you think these people listen? The fact that they don't listen is how they get caught up in these situations, which is why the people who are of sane mind know you have to take some preventative measures to make sure you don't get caught up in a situation. Now, again, this is not 100%. There are some cases where you can get, you, you'll get blindsided and you won't see the attack. So you can't respond. And let's be, let's be fair, most people don't train anyway. Fight or flight. A lot of times people freeze and they don't do anything. If they resort to flight, they're not in shape enough to get away. So they're winded within 10, 20 seconds. She's on point, which is why she's getting death threats. She's not staying on code, the female code, which is why she's being told that I hope a brick gets thrown at you. No one's going to come at her unless it's a random act of violence. No one is coming at Erica Lachey because of the way she carries herself. I don't want my car broken into or stolen or vandalized. I'm not going to leave it unlocked with valuable things in my car. I know people personally who have gotten their car broken into several times. I've never gotten my car broken into, knock on wood. If I don't want to get robbed, I'm not going to go to the ATM late at night by myself because that is not a wise decision to make. And you guys can say, well, that still doesn't stop people from getting robbed or their car getting stolen or whatever, but it greatly minimizes the risk. You feel me? Same thing when it comes to condoms and birth control. Condoms and birth control are not 100% effective, but it significantly minimizes the risk of you getting an STD or you getting pregnant. In addition to taking preventative measures by not being in dangerous places by yourself, actually listening to the men that tell you to take preventative measures is another way that will help to ensure your safety as a woman in this world. And to the ladies who have never had a man love them enough to try to prevent something bad from happening to them, you honestly have my sincere condolences. And to those of you who say, why don't you just tell men to stop abusing women? Why don't we hold them accountable? If telling someone to stop being an abuser, a thief, or a murderer worked, then the prisons, we wouldn't have a need for prisons. None of that would exist. So excuse me for living in the real world. I'm a very proactive kind of person. We can't change what happened in the past or things that have already happened to women, but we could help minimize the risk of those things happening in the future. Men on average live in the real world, not some fantasy land about how we think things should be. We live in reality because we have to. Until next time.